Today is garlic harvest day, which is one of our favorite days of the year. We are obsessed with growing garlic and we can't get enough of it, which is why this year we have 1,500 heads that we have in the ground. So, woo! I have some concerns about a few of our garlics. It is dying back in a weird way, a way that I don't remember it ever dying back before. And Kelowna is one of the easiest places to grow garlic ever. We have like hardly any concerns for disease. We literally live on a sand pit. So garlic likes lots of drainage. It has lots of drainage. So we've never had any concerns about having any sort of disease in the garlic before. So I'm extra paranoid. So I want to get this stuff out to check on it and to make sure that it's doing okay and also to keep it from potentially getting any worse. So these heads, when I pulled them out, are actually massive. It is time to pull the garlic. Maybe there's no disease at all. Maybe it's just time to pull all of our garlic. And also, even if you do have early stages of disease in your garlic, it's still completely fine to eat. You just want to be a little bit cautious about saving it to be seed garlic because you don't want to be seeding garlic disease into your soil, into your property. We have a couple different sections of garlic back here. We have almost seven rows of garlic, so lots and lots. Um, but three, three of the beds, three of the rows were a mixed collection of the best of our garlic from last year. And so in there we had we have this one, which is a soft neck, and I'm pretty sure it's called Sicilian. We have Red Russian, and we had a couple other mixed ones. Can't remember the names of. So it's it's a pretty fun bed to go through because you never know what you're gonna be pulling out. The other three beds that we have over here to pull today is the most beautiful seed garlic I'd ever seen. We bought it from a farm that can't remember the name of. Ian has like their contact somewhere on our Instagram and we definitely want to buy more seed garlic from them because it's just so nice. And the heads and the plants that it grew, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And it's all red Russian because last year when we were selling down at the farmer's market, even though the red Russian was some of our smaller bulbs, people wanted red Russian and we, uh, we are guided by the people's will. So hundreds and hundreds of red Russian uh, garlic bulbs coming out today. Ian, check out this prize winner. It's like borderline disqualified, but that is a serious, serious head of garlic. The farmer's market has a voracious appetite for garlic. They want garlic, they want all the garlic they can get their hands on. So we started pulling the garlic a couple weeks ago so that we can have garlic as early as possible. It probably could have gotten a little bit bigger, but people want their garlic now. In fact, we've been selling some of the garlic green and fresh and not even cured, and people still snap it up. People are obsessed with garlic. In our outbuilding, we have the garlic on racks to dry up. Uh, this is two beds and we're going to be pulling four today and we're out of racks already so I don't know where we're going to put it. It is going to be a crazy mountain of garlic in here. It's no secret that I love garlic. I've ruined many, many meals by putting too much garlic on my garlic bread and then having other people, you know, lose their taste for food, whatever. It's their fault. I feel like you should eat so much garlic that you can feel it coming out of your skin. That's like the proper amount. And so harvesting garlic is one of my favorite days. Uh, it's, it's also just really rewarding to pull them out of the ground, especially when they have the big dangly roots and you can just shake them and all the dirt falls off. It's, it's, it's just fun. We moved to the farm two years ago and before that we had a house in downtown Kelowna and we were space limited for how much garlic we could grow. We do like a hundred heads of garlic a year and always about a third of it you got to put aside for your seed garlic and you know we were close to satisfying our you know yearly consumption of garlic or so you know we had to buy some but you know it gave us a good portion of it and now to be able to grow 1500 heads is like 
a dream come true because there's like no limits in how we use it and we can still like constantly be surrounded in it just looking at it and then selling it constantly and you know everybody loves garlic so it's a fun thing to talk about just talk about you know what you cook up with it I'm conducting a little bit of an experiment this year we always pick the scapes off and we've been told that picking the scape or like the the seed pod or flower bud off of garlic makes it so that they form a larger uh, head of garlic. If you leave the the flower on that it will put energy towards this instead of energy towards the bulb. So I left some on partially because we just we weren't able to sell all of our garlic scapes because 1500 is a lot of garlic scapes to sell. Um, but yeah, so I'm really interested to see if there's a noticeable difference in these heads with all the scapes still attached um, compared to the ones where I picked the scapes off. Uh, you know, it, it's one of those things. I wonder if it's just a rumor. It is a weedy mess in here. It's almost hard to see the garlic because there's the weeds are getting so tall. Normally we would have weeded up the garlic better um the the truth is we did weed this all spring i probably stopped weeding in here about three weeks ago which in a normal year would be fine but we've had so much wet cool weather this year that the the weeds are just thriving so it's it's not as beautiful as it normally would be but the garlic is still gonna be completely fine now let's make it beautiful you don't need to do this, but I like doing this every once in a while. Look at that color! Looking good. Beauty! The rule for harvesting garlic is that you're supposed to pull it out of the ground when, you know, the bottom third or the bottom half of the leaves have died back and gone brown uh, we're we're uh, rule breakers around here the way we decide when to pick our garlic is that you know a month ago we start pulling heads we just pull a head out of the ground we look at it we say okay like it's this big you know it is it ready is it close to ready is it still tiny it needs like a month um, you know, and then every week we just keep pulling a handful of garlic um, and then when we finally see that they're to the size that we want them to be that's when we pull it um, we want them to be as big as possible but not have split open if they've split open then then they're not gonna store as well so you can see this this head of garlic this is the perfect size this is this is a good large head of garlic for red russian at least where we grow um, and then you can see there's probably only about two leaves that have died off you know there's still lots of green these tips that are brown this is because we've stopped watering the garlic it's just it's sad <laughs> from lack of water um, but if we went by the rule of waiting until like these leaves had died back then at our house at least these cloves would be so big that they would have split open and it would be too late we would have harvested it too late so you know it's it's a good general rule to begin having ideas but i highly advise just pulling and testing especially if you have more than you know like a dozen heads of garlic like when we had a hundred obviously we could pull a few small you you can still eat it small um but it helps you get the biggest possible Look at that. Oh wait, that's not garlic. Oh yeah, look at that.
I'm hot, tired, and sweaty, so we're gonna go to the lake instead of finishing the garlic. Because we can pick it up when we get back and get it inside, when it's a little bit cooler. It's later now. We're back from the beach, refreshed, ready to finish up putting this garlic away. A thousand heads. Fifteen hundred heads. Well, we already pulled five hundred. A thousand heads. A thousand heads. Show the people how you pick the garlic up. I we get a lot it. of questions. The question we get asked the most is, how do you pick up garlic from the ground? So like this. This is the proper handling technique. <laughs> Gently, I guess. Don't smash it, it will bruise it, and then it won't keep as well. Well, we harvested the garlic, we cleaned up the garlic, now there's only one thing left to do, and that is take our weird pictures of us holding all the garlic that we possibly hold. The next step after pulling the garlic is that we have to cure the garlic, which means it has to dry for uh, two to three weeks, at which point all the moisture is out of the plants, but it has to be out of the sun, has to be out of the rain. Uh, so we have so much garlic, we don't know where to put it all. So we've laid down this tarp and we're just gonna spread it out on the floor. It's gonna be a big pain in the butt, but 1,500 heads of garlic. That is still exciting. Ta-da! We have finished our garlic harvest for the day. For the year. This is always one of the hardest parts for me because I have to patiently wait for all this garlic to be ready. It's going to be spread out here, I'm going to be staring at it, I'm going to be constantly <laughs> pulling it apart and checking to see if it's dry yet. I know it's going to take longer than I think it will, it always does, but almost there. Almost, it's almost time for us to have our homegrown garlic again, huh, amazing. It was a long, hot day getting this and some other stuff done today. I am very glad to have, you know, this all set up, ready to dry. There's nothing more to do here. And uh, now we can go do what's really important, which is uh, go put the chickens to bed and pet the rooster. Oh, I'm touching you. I'm touching you, big man. <laughs> oh, you're getting pet, oh. Mr. Rooster. Oh. <laughs> Such torture. Um, you too. Oh, little face rubs. <laughs>